I'm really excited to be here with Alad to talk to you about Crossplane CDK 8s, um, which is a new multi language toolkit to build your own crossplane platform configurations using familiar languages like TypeScript, Python, or Java. So if you're frustrated with you know, deeply indented YAML or you want to conditionally emit resources from your pipelines or generate multiple subnets in a for loop, um, get the benefits of kind of a, a statically compiled language um, with type checking um, or you know, use libraries from NPM or PyPy um, to build CIDR blocks or allocate IP addresses, we think that crossplane CDK 8s will be very interesting for you. Um, it's currently in experimental uh, mode right now. And so um, what we're going to cover today is enabling app teams to solve service, similar to what Jared just showed, um, where you can go and provision a complete Kubernetes environment, including um, up with abstract resources like uh, the cluster, uh, the networking, um, even a Postgres database attached to that cluster. And so um, what we're I'm doing as a platform team is enabling um, you to vend your own cloud APIs to those app dev teams. We're going to be using the cross-plane provider for AWS, which has all the cloud service primitives um, that Jay and Muvap were talking about earlier. Um, we're going to compose those up into cross-plane compositions to offer um, classes of service for each API. And then we're going to expose our own cloud APIs, we, you know, creating XRDs or composite resource definitions um, that will offer up a couple CRDs that we'll be importing here momentarily. Um, the claim kinds are what we see up above here um, for clusters, networks, and Postgres. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Alad, who's going to give us a quick overview of CDKs. Oh, Alad, you might be on mute. Hey, everybody. Phil, can you hear me now? Coming through. It's great to be here. Uh, it's been super interesting to see um, everybody uh, talking about the power of, of designing these APIs. Uh, and Kubernetes is very interesting in that sense because it, um, it has this uniform model. And this uniform model for, for APIs allows us to do really interesting things. And I think that, that ex that's exactly what we've seen in the previous uh, sessions like taking a different angle, leveraging this declarative model. <clears throat> and so CDK it's, is, uh, in short, CDK for Kubernetes. This, this screen is probably a, the best way to explain it. You, you can see it um, allows you to use uh, familiar programming languages like TypeScript, JavaScript, Java.net, uh, Python, Go is uh, close, uh, is, is coming soon uh, to define your Kubernetes manifests and synthesize the Kubernetes manifests for you. And so this is an example where um, you can see that I define, I have this class that is, uh, extends a chart, which is one-to-one uh, -one with the manifest, uh, and includes this abstract thing called web service. And behind this abstract thing called web service, uh, there's a bunch of Kubernetes resources like deployment and service and some uh, relationships between them. But from the user's perspective, they, they just needed to work against this abstract class. And so if you think about it, it's kind of like client-side CRDs is the ability to actually create these abstractions that are client-side only. And what we've been doing with Phil and with Crossplane uh, in the past few months is uh, trying to enable uh, a full end-to-end -end experience of, of authoring CRD, author, author, authoring abstractions using Crossplane and then vending them as uh, CDKs classes so that uh, users can easily use them. So the way uh, CDKs works in general, uh, it has a, a nice CLI that allows you to create new projects. Um, and then the, the, sec the second thing you'd, you'd probably want to do is import Kubernetes objects into your application. Like even the core Kubernetes objects are, uh, you know, an, an extensible and no, not an extensible, but a moving target in a sense. And so like every time you use Kubernetes, uh, you'd want to import the Kubernetes APIs, and you can also import any CRD. And so this import uh, capability allows us to automatically generate code uh, that represents these resources in the pro programming language that you're using. And then you write your code in, in, in whatever programming language you're using the IDs and tools and techniques and testing capabilities that you're familiar with. Um, and the, the output of what you're writing is um, CDK's application, which you synthesize into Kubernetes manifests that are 
completely normal, regular Kubernetes manifest can run in any cluster. Uh, and from that point, uh, that divide is basically moving uh, to the deployment and the execution of, the, of those resources. And, and for that, you know, CD case is basically out of the picture. Like uh, those manifests were uh, as if you were written them by hand. Uh, so this is generally the workflow. Um, let's, uh, let's see a little demo. Awesome. So um, what we're going to be doing now is uh, spinning up a Kubernetes environment, um, kind of like what Jared showed, but um, here we're going to be doing it entirely in TypeScript. So the same flow, um, we've already kind of deployed um, our cross-plane uh, platform configuration to the control cluster. And so we can just get the CRDs back, import those in, and then um, have that generate a Kubernetes environment manifest that will dynamically provision um, a Kubernetes app cluster using the best practices created by the platform operator. So um, this is basically the uh, definition of um, our uh, you know, Kubernetes environment. We have um, an Acme cluster that's defined um, for the best practices um, in Acme. And this is the control surface for that abstraction that we've exposed up. Um, and then we have our Postgres instance and we have a network that securely connects the two. Um, and so what we're going to do um, quickly here is go ahead and just uh, build this. And you can follow along with this as well um, in Crossplane Contrib. Um, and so what this is going to do is build the, um, the, the packages here. And so um, it'll go ahead and import the CRDs um, that are basically being exported from our control cluster, the abstractions that we had there. Um, it's also going to be building the platform itself. Um, there are two examples in this, this project. Um, and so we can see it's importing all of the AWS uh, resources that have been code generated from the ACK CodeGen pipeline, um, as well as generating the output in the disk directory here. And so um, if we take a look at that for our simple um, Kubernetes environment, um, this is the YAML that gets rendered. And then on the right here, we have upbound cloud. And so we've provisioned an upbound cloud platform, um, which has a cross plane um, inside of that. And so we're going to come over here to our team one workspace. And we can see that um, we've published you know, the resources and made those available to team one. And we've connected this using the CLI into um, our cube control here. And so if we go then and apply um, the uh, resulting um, output for the manifest. That's going to go ahead and create resources. Um, oh, I have to change into that directory. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Um, that's going to go ahead and apply that manifest um, to the control cluster. And then we'll see that it's creating those resources down here at the bottom. And then that should basically be picked up when we take a look at um, upbound cloud here on the right. So we can see that it's provisioning that um, cluster, it's provisioning the network, and then it's provisioning a PostgreSQL instance. And since we have a fully GitOps compatible declarative interface, we can just apply all of those at the same time. And then Crossplane will just make that so, even though they're applied you know, with dependency ordering and all that kind of a thing. So that's the, the overview of spinning up a Kubernetes environment, super easy for app devs to do that in their language of choice. Um, and so if we take a look at how that is made possible. Um, before, before, oh, Phil, before, we, before we move to the second uh, uh, phase of the demo, I just wanted to say something quick. So this experience is, you know, it, it doesn't matter how, you know, these uh, custom resources were created. For all intents and purposes, th those could be the custom resources that we created in the previous uh, session. Right, and so the the beauty of how Crossplane's uh, custom resources work is that they're you know advertised as regular CRDs, and so from an application developer's point of view, if, if I'm the application team, it doesn't matter how you know my operations team or my platform team publish those resources. As far as I'm concerned, those resources are just CRDs in my in my cluster, and so what we've shown now is the experience of the app developer, and the app developer doesn't even know. Uh, how those resources were created. The second part of the demo, we're actually showing that you could define those custom resources, those, those uh, uh, cross-plane compositions, also using CDKs. 
whether you want to do that or not want to do that, that's a different question, right? Like that's the question for the platform team, not the question for the app team. So that's kind of like when we wanted to show first what the app team's experience is. Yeah, totally. That, that's a great point, Elad. Um, and so if, if we dive into what you're mentioning there in terms of, you know, building that, that platform and how we made those, you know, cluster.acme.io or network.acme.io um, CRDs available to the app team to use in, in the previous demo, we can also use CDKs and cross-plane CDKs to build that, that platform configuration. And so in this case, we're installing cross-plane CDKs from NPM. We're importing the cross-plane provider AWS from uh, CRDs.dev um, into CDK8. And so all of the cross-plane provider resources are available, fully documented there. Um, and then you can import those directly. And then you can basically code or compose those together to create your platform definition, um, build and push those up into um, the upbound uh, Docker registry, um, which is a free registry that you can use. Um, and then we'll go ahead and install those into the control cluster. And that's basically how um, you know, we make our own APIs available to our, our app team so that they can provision those Kubernetes environments um, on demand. So um, just taking a look briefly at the authoring experience for this, um, if we come in and look at the platform definition and we go down here to main, um, we can see that it's, it's quite simple. We have a handful of charts um, that define each YAML file that we want to output. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and synth this definition. Um, and then that basically um, will include these charts for things like um, the configuration um, and things like um, Postgres. And so this has um, a definition of an XRD, um, a, a composite resource definition. Um, and then we basically can describe you know, what group, what claim kind, um, the connection secret information, um, as well as all of the spec fields. Um, and this basically then um, it can be used in a cross-plane composition and passing that in and it will intelligently default um, a lot of the fields you would otherwise need to manually specify in the YAML um, if you were just coding that by hand. And then we can add resources from the imported um, AWS uh, resources here for all of the co-generated things from ACK and, and cross-plane and compose those together um, and then map those um, kind of using the, the available functions there. And so when you look at the resulting um, YAMLs that get output into dist, um, even just looking at something like cross-plane IO, um, it's very much more of the assembly language of, um, you know, kind of the, the output there. Um, and then when you look at things like, um, you know, back in the, the charts for the config, um, you can just import things from a file, for example, to pull in the icon data. Um, and so it's a much cleaner representation. It's fully type checked and um, easily tested. So um, some really nice work that, that Alad did um, kind of getting this all ship shape. And uh, you, know, you can check it out in the, the cross-plane CDK repo. And uh, we should have our networks actually up and running here. So that, that's going good. And I will just mention one last thing. Um, so if you come into this environment and then you want to see what's actually being deployed behind the scenes, um, you can just do a k get manage or a cube control get managed, and that'll get all the underlying managed resources. Um, and so you can see that um, here um, that most of these have been provisioned into a ready true state, and um, you can do that all from your development environment. Um, you don't have to use the UI, but you can also use that to browse around as well in upbound cloud. So. Um, so if we switch back here to the overview, any closing comments on this one, Alad? Yeah, I think um, one thing to mention is that the, the API that you showed for um, the, you know, creating the, for the platform team, for creating the, the resources, um, you know, th these are just a, a, a sketch of, of what we could do with the richness of, of you know, object-oriented programming in that sense. And so Phil made an, uh, you know, ex, uh, you know, an experimental API here that uses uh, these fluent, um, this fluent model. Uh, but I think like the, what I wanted to emphasize is that once you get into the space of programming languages and object-oriented design and you know, creating class libraries, uh, there are so many other tools for expressing uh, ergonomic and, and friendly APIs than, than we had in the declarative world. 
uh, even things like, you know, read this from file. Uh, but there, there are a lot of things that we can do. And CDK for Kubernetes is based on, uh, on another CDK project called the AWS CDK, which has been around for a few years now. And the APIs that we've managed to build um, that are based on users' intent as opposed to based on the config, you know, the data that needs to be served into the into the desired the desired state model. Uh, there's a there's a lot to do there. There's some beautiful stuff that we can we can design. And so I think like the combination of cross plane and CDK is super interesting. And I think I don't know Phil if you're if you're intending to mention that, but uh, we're also working on um, enabling uh, the creation of oper of uh, cross plane uh, based operators using CDK, which is another step further uh, towards like using general purpose programming. For yeah, uh, absolutely. And so when you think about um, where this is run, this is all run statically in your pipeline um, to basically emit the resources and it's great for, for GitOps and that type of thing. But if you do want to dynamically evaluate this behind the Kubernetes API line, you could imagine having an option on the composition that says build and run this as a sidecar image and then have that basically be run um, behind the Kubernetes API line so that it can be dynamically evaluated there. Um, and that's um, some work that both Alad and Muvafak have been working on um, with the CDK sidecar and then custom compositions in, in Crossplane. So really excited about that. I think I dropped a link to the multi-language stuff on Crossplane General. So um, definitely check it out on our Slack. And then um, maybe just to kind of wrap up and, and close, um, you know, so you can use Cross-plane CDKs and CDKs in general, um, both from um, an app dev perspective to basically build and package, you know, your applications, the infrastructure that they depend on, um, as well as building your cross-plane platform configurations and then making those available um, for your teams to use. So really excited about the project. Um, check it out um, here in Cross-plane Contrib, and thanks for watching. <laughs>